Welcome in today, you guys. Today is going to be a full declutter of all of my single eyeshadows. And well, I shouldn't say just singles, but anything that is below a quad. So I do have some like Kaja stacks here that have three in there. It's just gonna be a lovely hand intro today. It is the new year and I still have two declutters to go. So still working through my collection so that I can film a full chopping block video, which may end up going up before the foundation declutter. But I do have all of my other declutters that I've done for the end of the year up on my channel. I've done every other category at this point, eyeshadows, primers, concealers, blushes, bronzers. The only thing I haven't done yet is foundations, which will be last because I'm still doing wear tests on the rest of my foundation. So if you guys have not seen any of those other videos and are interested in checking out any of my declutters, please check out my declutter playlist. Today, I do also have eyeliners, shadow sticks. I don't think today is gonna be a super brutal declutter. I do have some other things that are like off camera right now. I can't get like my single shadows. I have another bin over here. Again, not a brutal declutter, but I do wanna go through some of these and there's just some I need to be honest with myself and get rid of. Um, I'm probably gonna do some swatchy swatches in today's video because there are some things I think I can't remember and I want to see how they look on my swatches so we might do a bit of that. I will try and do as much as I can so I do have my <laughs> my little wet wipes and my rag ready to go. Let me move some of these aside and we will jump on into it. So I think I'll just go basket by basket. This one here is mostly my liners, my liquid liners, my pencils, all that good stuff. I don't have a ton, but I feel like I've definitely collected more than I'm using. It's it's nice to have some on hand, uh, but yeah, I definitely don't reach for all of them. So the first one up I have here is from the Relove line. This is one of the water activated liners in Agile. It's pretty, it's nice, it's really well performing just not something that I would normally reach for. I got it to test a full face of Relove, but honestly, I would much prefer like reaching for a gel liner or a liquid liner or even a shadow kind of over this. So this one I'm going to declutter, trying to decide where declutter goes. Same thing with this. This is just a gel liner in a pot from Maybelline, The Lasting Drama. It's nice, it's good. Again, I would rather reach for just a stick cream or even a liquid over this. So I'm gonna declutter that. Then all of my black gels, which I don't have a ton. Um, I feel like I only have these three plus a pencil. So I have one from Colfi. It's okay, it's not waterproof. I mean, it's fine. This one is in Nazar No More. So it's the Underline Kajal Liner. I mean, I like it if I'm gonna smoke out a wing or something like that, but it doesn't really perform well in the waterline, but I'm still gonna hold on to this. The really nice waterproof ones that I have are from Sephora and then ColourPop. So ColourPop Cream Gel Liner, this one is in Swerve, which is a matte, and then this one is just like a black matte. It's like my favorite, so the lettering has come off. It's the Sephora Retractable Gel Liners. Both of these are tremendous waterproof gel liners. This one I am gonna let go. This is one from Cali Ray. It's the Surf Proof Easy Glider Eye Definer. It is not waterproof whatsoever. It's supposed to be surf proof, which I imagine they mean waterproof, but yeah, it absolutely smudges. It transfers in my waterline. I really won't reach for this. So I'm gonna declutter this one. This one I'm on the fence about. It's a little mini of the Artist Color Pencils from Makeup Forever. It's good, it came in a set, and I also have the white one. It's not waterproof though, so I don't know what else I would use it for. And I already kept the Kulfi one. I honestly just, I don't even know if this is something I would reach for. Mm, it's like nice, but would I rather reach for a gel? I feel like I'm not committed to either one. I mean, they're both nice. I guess I'll just hold on to this one and this one from Makeup Forever. This one I will let go, the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk. I almost will never reach for an, an all white. And if I do, I feel like this one from Makeup Forever is fine. It's just, it's a different texture. Like obviously this is a pencil and this is much creamier. The only time I reached for this was to do like face painting on my son because he wanted a candy cane on his face and he wanted it like over and over for Christmas. But aside from that, I just, I don't, I won't reach for this. So I'm gonna declutter it and it's inexpensive too. So I can repurchase it if I need to. Then my browns are, I don't have that many browns, but I don't think I need all of these. I wanna say these are 
all of my browns. So I definitely want to hold on to the ColourPop BFF Cream Gel Liner. This one is in Brouhaha. ColourPop does an amazing job with waterproof formula. Same thing with the Catrice, the 20 hour ultra precision gel liner. I'm sure this is in brown. That's also a good one. The L'Oreal Infallible is good for smoking out, but I won't reach for this. I barely ever use gel liner that I'll like smoke out. It's not bad. It's just, uh, again, would rather use a shadow here. So I'm gonna let this one go. I just don't need it. And then this one from Colfi, it has a little bit of a shimmer, so I like that. It's again, not waterproof, but still nice. I'm gonna hold on to this one. I just like Colfi. And then I have some here that are, what is this one? Gucci, that's a brow pencil. Hello, what are you doing in there? My other gels that are like colored-ish are here, Moira, what else? I have some Moira ones. All of my Moira ones are amazing and I wanna hold on to them. They also do a tremendous like waterproof formula and I like playing with colors. So Moira and ColourPop, honestly, they're like pretty comparable in terms of their price point and the fact that they do a really good waterproof liner. So I'm gonna hold on to my Moira ones. And then the cream gel liner from ColourPop again. This one is just like a, a beigey nude in Honey Dude. So I'm gonna hold on to that one as well. And then I have one they don't even make anymore from Urban Decay. It's shimmery. It is in Tiger's Eye, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Tiger's Eye. It's good. It's also waterproof. Will I reach for this one? Uh, I don't know, hold on. I honestly don't love to sharpen my pencils, but it's such a good formula. I think I'll hold on to this one. This one is a MUA Professional Intense Gel Color Eyeliner. Mm, again, will I reach for a deep blue like this or is this one from Moira fine? I've barely even used this. It's all fine, you declutter things until you're doing an eye look and then you're looking for like a deeper blue. I think I'm gonna just declutter this one because honestly, I don't remember it being very waterproof. This one from Give Beauty, it's my only like green shimmer, I guess. It's nice, it performs pretty well. Some of her other colors didn't do so good on me. So I feel like I'll hold on to that one. This one from Make Beauty, uh, I like it too. Honestly, I would prefer to reach for this one over the one from Urban Decay. You can still get your hands on this one. This is in Other World. I just almost never reach for this, you guys, and I, I really am so lazy when it comes to sharpening pencils, and so I try not to keep ones that are like this because I just know myself. Like, when they're not sharp, I just won't go back and sharpen them, and so they'll just get ignored. So I'll hold on to this one, and I am going to let the one from Urban Decay go. I feel like that's silly, but... That's just how I'm gonna do it. And then I just, I really like this color from Give. These are her, what does she call it? Line It Up 24 Hour Gel Pencil Liner. This one is in Greener Pastures. Doesn't claim to be waterproof, but I'm gonna hold on to it. Then I have one from Rare Beauty. It's the Perfect Strokes Longwear Gel Liner in Compassion. I like it because it's retractable. I don't really have this deep burgundy shade really anywhere else, so I'm gonna hold on to that one. And then I have a bunch of the Liners from Moira Beauty Supernova Multi-Chrome Gel Liners. I love these. ColourPop just came out with some and I purchased a couple, like three different shades. These are all just really fun. Not all of them translate like great in terms of their multi-chromeness, but they're still really, really fun. Again, Moira does a really good job in like the waterproof formula. So this was every one of the liners except one. I think one was sold out when I purchased these. So pretty much the whole set. Gonna hold on to that. And then these are all of my black liners. Not all of these are fabulous. I feel like I'm gonna declutter this one. This was from Glam Light in the Chucky collection. I don't know. I'm really addicted to black liners. This one from Rare Beauty is really good. I really love this one from Estate. Such a nice tip plus formula. The only one I don't love is this one from Urban Decay because of the packaging. Honestly, the packaging is like really difficult. You know what, I'm gonna hold on to it. And then I love these three. The NYX Epic Ink Liner, so good and so non-budge. Same thing with Danessa Myrick's Linework Liner, so non-budge. Then the Sephora Colorful Wink It Liner, waterproof, also so non-budge. Ooh, I wish I could remember which one I just swatched here because these ones are spidering. I feel like that was the Rare Beauty one that's like spidering right now. I don't like that. 
No, it's this one from Estate. I mean, it's really pigmented, but yeah, it's like kind of spidering. So I'm gonna let that one go. And I'm just gonna hold on to all of these black liners. Then I have the Eye Catching Dip Liner from Moira Beauty. I didn't think I was gonna like this, but I really enjoy this. It performs really well. It's non-budge. It's my only like colorful liquid. And then the two stamps from Eye Method Beauty. The liner is fine, but I really do enjoy the stamps on these and they still perform well. It's, I got these in PR, like my first, very first PR. I feel like Eye Method Beauty reaches out to basically every new creator. So I'm gonna hold on to those. And then I have the Glitter Glitter Liner from Moira. It actually performs well. It's just probably, I don't know, not something that I'm gonna reach for all that often. And it's like, honestly, like I have shadows like this. It's really good quality though. It's really easy to just draw on. These sparkles really translate. It's just honestly, I, I don't do liner like that very often. Mm, okay, I keep like swatching stuff and I'm, I'm such a nightmare. I wanna hold on to it just cause I'm like, what if, what if I use it? And then I probably never will. So I am right now holding on to all of these, you guys. And I'm decluttering eight. That is so sad, so sad. I told you guys this wouldn't be brutal, but at least uh, I've cleared out some of the stuff I absolutely never reach for. Well, you can see what's waterproof and what isn't. <laughs> this is the Moira Multichrome. Like these are extremely tricky to get off. All right, I just pulled out the next one here. A bunch of just my potted singles. Let's go through these. Okay, so first off, I have two from Merit. I know that these are, some people hate these. I actually think they're good for what they are. They're pigmented and decent and they're creamy enough. I feel like you either love these or hate these and I don't hate them. I just, I don't, they're maybe not everybody's kind of cup of tea because they're a complete matte finish. This one is in studio. This one is in social. I enjoy these. I don't use them that often, but I do think that they perform really well. So I am going to, hold on to those ones. This one here from Lorac, I'm pretty sure is like really dried out. It's in lace. I wanna say, yeah, it just totally pops out. It's gorgeous. I feel like it still performs well, you know, once you like get your finger in here, but it is definitely on the dry side. I just haven't reached for it in so long. And ooh, I really like the way that looks, but it's got like these really intense champagne kind of sparkles in here. But I feel like I just need to repurchase this. This is just like, you know, too dry. I don't wanna mess around with it. So I'm gonna declutter that one. Two from Victoria Beckham. These are her lid lusters. One is my favorite, this one here in blonde. It's like a yellow, it's so pretty. This is probably not everybody's cup of tea. I just happen to like, enjoy yellow shimmers very, very much. And highlighters too. I don't know why I'm like that, just appealing to my eyes. I'm gonna hold on to both of these. This one is in chiffon. Not my absolute favorite, but I feel like this is definitely a more popular taupey shade. It's pretty, it's just, it's kind of underwhelming on the eyes. I, I usually, when I'm going for a single, like something a little bit more intense, but I feel like I'm getting into shades like this much more these days. So I'm gonna hold on to that. Then I have, I'm gonna put this one aside, one from Hourglass, one of the Scattered Lights in Aura. I think this is really pretty and it's still really creamy. Not as intense, I feel like, of a base pigment as I'm reaching for these days, but I'm gonna hold on to it. Pardon me if I end up swatching over shimmer. And I don't feel like I'm gonna get all of the like glitter off of my hands if I keep swatching. The Chrome Crush from Flower Beauty in the shade Quartz. This is beautiful, uh, very similar to the Hourglass Scattered Lights, just a fraction of the cost, maybe even more creamy. Well, it's hard to tell. My Hourglass one is a little on the older side. So I'm gonna keep that one. Then two of the Eyes to Mesmerize from Charlotte. It is in Pillow Talk and then Oyster Pearl. These are beautiful cream, beautiful shades. I, I tend to go for like one bronze shade and then one more pinky mauve shade. So I'm holding on to both of these. I have a ton of ColourPop Super Shocks, not a ton, but a bit more, but they're in different places. So this is the only one I have right now. This one's just older and on the lighter side, I've gotten good use out of it. It's in Birthday Wish and they don't make this anymore. So I'm gonna declutter it. 
And then I have a lustrous foil eyeshadow from Ulta in silver leaf. This is intense. You know, you have to like a crumbly shadow that you're willing to just rub into the skin to get this really wet effect. It takes a little bit of work, but it's just gorgeous. But it can be very, very messy. So you have to like that. You have to tolerate it, I think. I think I've referred to this as like not for the faint of heart, basically. But I like it. I'm going to hold on to it. So from here, I only ended up decluttering two. Another little basket right here. Just a variety of different things here. I've got the Juvia's Place. I think this is the Duochrome, Culture Duochrome Liquid Eyeshadow in Fiji, Fuji. It's fine. It's on the drier side, like already. I don't think I've had it super long, but I also didn't love how like translucent it was. Just kind of not my thing. Like I definitely want a stronger base. So I am going to declutter this. I think the formula is good. And then I have two from Relove, the eye lights. I really enjoy this one here in Queen. It's a pretty shade. The problem is like this weird doe foot applicator. I think that this formula dries down to kind of like this crusty finish. This one here, again, very translucent and shifty. Kind of not my thing. I think this one has like a stronger base than the Juvia's Place one because it has like more pink sparkles in it. It's just, it. I don't like the way these wear. They don't wear super gracefully. So I'm going to declutter both of those. I have one here from Moira. It's the Super Hyped Liquid Pigment in Extra Sparkle. This is amazing. Moira Beauty does such a good job on their liquid shadows. Like if you are into a liquid shadow that's super shimmery, even the matte ones that they have, like this is a beautiful formula. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. And then the Fractal Eye Paint from About Face. You know, I don't love the way that this formula works on my hooded eyes. I just, I feel like it transfers in, in a really weird way. I, I, don't, I don't know. This is something I would definitely like foresee myself putting in a chopping block. I mean, for now, I think I'm gonna hold on to it. It wasn't my absolute favorite on my hooded eyes though. Then I have one from L'Oreal, it's the Brilliant Eyes. This one is in the shade Diamond Drop. I like this one a lot actually. I feel like it's a thicker formula though. So you do have to like a thicker formula. It has a tendency to kind of perform like the Relove ones where it gets a little bit hard. It doesn't wear super gracefully. I would definitely recommend the Moira over the L'Oreal if you're gonna go for something shimmery because this is just a thinner formula, but I'm gonna hold on to it because I like it. Then I have three of the Ultimate Glow Shots from NYX. You know, I think these perform really well. I just don't foresee myself reaching for these. I, I really like them. It's just, will I reach for these like all over? Hmm. It's not to say that I haven't before because I think these are just an amazingly like thin but opaque formula and then they last all day. I just don't know if I'm reaching for something this solidly pigmented. And then this one right here is again, just a little bit translucent for me. Just a, not something that I'm reaching for entirely. So you know what? I think I'll hold on to these two and I will declutter this paler one. This one is in Come Through Coconut. The red one is in Raspberry Rave. And then this is Clementine Fine. So I'm gonna hold on to the colorful ones and then get rid of the white one. I have one from Give Beauty. It's the Painted Up Longwear Mousse Eyeshadow in Top Knot. I didn't love this when I first tried it. I like it so much more now. I feel like it's just, the effect is really pretty. It's very, very lightweight. It is very nice. It's a more emollient formula though. So I feel like for me, it takes a while longer to dry down, but I'm still gonna hold on to it. This one from Milk, it's cute. It's the Color Chalk in Dodgeball. I know these are kind of gimmicky, but I kind of still like them. I can get like a similar effect from an eyeshadow, but I still enjoy this. So it's basically just a chalk and it still feels good. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. Really enjoy this formula from KVD, the Dazzle Stick. 
and I'm just gonna roll it up a tiny bit. Very wet, creamy formula, very pigmented. So getting into shades like this right now, so I'm gonna hold on to that one. So from here, I held on to these eight and I decluttered four, so that works. I have another random little bin here. I'm just kind of going through the bins. I feel like this is primarily made up of my shadow sticks. I do have some more in random places and then those creams over there. Let's go through the shadow sticks, I think, first um, because I know there are some here that I do want to declutter. So all of these from Luxaza, I really enjoy. They also sent me these in PR. One side comes with a little brush that's actually quite useful. And then the other side is the stick that rolls up. I think these are pretty amazing. Honestly, they're such a good formula. They're so easily blendable. I have a good range. It's basically like a full color story here. I wanna say this was in Coral Wave was the set of six that I got, but they sell like sets of three, sets of four. I just really enjoy these. I think they perform really, really well. Good for travel, because you have like a good variety here, but also kind of comes with the brush. So yeah, this was a set. I think the color story was Coral Wave, but they come with individual shades. I am gonna hold on to all of those. And then I have one little mini from Laura Mercier. This one is in Amethyst. I wanna say this is one of her more popular shades, just a taupey shimmer. Love this formula, I mean, classic. Then I have two from Rare Beauty. Hmm. You know, I hate to say this, I'm just not a fan of this formula. I find it difficult to blend in, and then when I can blend it, I kind of feel like it ends up looking pretty patchy. I like this one a little bit more because you can kind of lay it all over the lid and just leave it and not blend it in. But like, look how, they're so creamy. This is the All of the Above Weightless Eyeshadow Stick in Integrity. And then this one is in Compassion, same as the liner. I like the shade a little bit more, but honestly, I just, I cannot blend it in. And I think these are relevant. So I'd like to hold on to these for reference in my closet where I do keep items that I wanna hold on to because I think they're relevant, but that I won't reach for personally. So I'm gonna hold on to these in the reference library is what I call it, but we count them as declutters. So I'm gonna let both of those kind of go, you know? And then I have two from Milani. Again, not my favorite stick formula. These are their gilded eyeshadow sticks in Canyon and Blossom. Blossom's kind of an all over shade, but it came broken and then it started to like crumble on me as I was using it. Not bad, like the formula necessarily. It's just like really, really creamy kind of falls apart on me. I think these are better in terms of blendability than the ones from Rare Beauty. So I would love to give them kind of more love and decide whether or not they're like a superior formula that I would reach for over other sticks. I'm gonna hold on to it. This is not technically a eye stick. It's a jumbo face stick from NYX, but I've been using it as a single shadow in Lemon Meringue. I don't care if it's not safe for the eyes, I'm gonna do it. I do not recommend. Then I have a jumbo eye pencil in, it's in Black Bean from NYX. Mm, I haven't even used this. And I just don't see myself reaching for like an all black. So I'm gonna pass that along. Then I have one from Pinky Rose in the shade Jazz. This is a really good formula. I've used this quite a bit. Pigmented, blendable, has a little bit of a sheen to it. I'm gonna hold on to that. This one from ColourPop is a really great formula. I think this is in Socialite, it's a metallic. I prefer this over the, from Milani, just think it's a better formula. So I'm definitely holding on to this one. So from here, I held on to 12 and I got rid of three. So I told you guys, not an extremely brutal declutter. Next little bin here. Bunch of potteds, some loose pigments here, a couple of duos. So let's start with this Kaja Trio. I actually bought another one that's in a lighter color story. I think this one is okay. It's just a little bit deep for me. I, I don't typically like reach for a dark shimmer plus two dark mattes. So I think the quality is really good, but I'm just not gonna reach for it. So I'm gonna declutter that one. 
Then I have a duo from Syrah. It's the Prismatique Eyes in Neutral Eyes. So the top has a cream and then the bottom has a shimmer and it's really pretty. And again, I'm reaching for darker singles these days. So I'm gonna hold on to this one. Then I have one of the Danessa Myricks Infinite Chrome Flakes in Disco. I don't think these are dry yet and I really think these are fun like occasionally, you know, like if you're just looking to like spice things up. I even have like put these on the lips. It still feels like really creamy. So I just feel like it's so much fun. I mean, I almost like never use this, but I actually have dipped into it. I don't know, quite a bit enough that there's like that much gone. If you guys can see it's fun and they haven't dried out yet. So for now, I'm going to hold on to this one. Like, look at how they, it's so fun. I have one here from Phytosurgence. It's in Starlight Symphony. It's one of their flash fluorescents. I have talked about this, you guys. I feel like this is just such a hard formula. Like it's, it's really hard pressed. I don't get a ton of base on it. People have told me that this is one of those shades that doesn't have a ton of base pigment in Starlight Symphony, but I go for something way more intense than this when I'm looking for a single. So I'm going to hold on to this because it's fairly new in the reference library, but it's a technical declutter. I am not going to keep it and use it personally. Then this one from Moira is the Lucent Cream Shadow. Oh my gosh, look at Danessa. She's all over. Hello. I feel like this video is absolute chaos. All right, so where was I? Where was I? I have no idea. Was I anywhere? Yes, Moira, Lucent Cream Shadow in Infinity. This is gorgeous. It's like this beautiful putty formula. It's great. Yes, thank you. I would buy a million and one more in that formula. Then these ones from Charlotte Tilbury were limited edition. They're her pop shots. I got two of the four shades, I think. The hypnotizing pop shots in Lover's Diamond and then Sunlit Diamond. So Lover's Diamond I think is orange. No, it's the red one. I think these are gorgeous. I don't mind them. They're not like better than, you know, um, a nice indie shadow, but it's like gold inside of the red and they're very creamy. I actually think they're really good. A lot of people were like, oh, these aren't worth the price. I mean, you know, you could say that about a lot of things, quite honestly. So I enjoy those. I'm definitely holding on to those. One here from the drugstore is the LA Girl Shade Shifter Duo I Duochrome Eyeshadow in Topaz. I did not care for this formula. It is a powder, but it's super dry. It's like, it just gets super patchy on the eyes. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that. It's nice now that my finger's slightly wet, but when my finger is dry, it just doesn't look good. It doesn't wear well. It barely translates in a shifty way on the eyes. I just, I overall didn't enjoy this formula. I feel like I have other duochrome powders that in my indie brand shadows that I just prefer more than this. So I'm gonna let that go. One here from Revlon, it's the Color Stay Cream Shadow. I wanna say it's in Creme Brulee, yes. This is a nice little cream, kind of unoffensive. It's very, very light. It is something that mm, I like it. I just, I don't think I'm reaching for something this light right now, but I would like to hold on to it because it's not that old in reference, but I am going to kind of technically declutter it because it's just too light for me. You know, honestly, I'm just, I'm not gonna really reach for that. Then I have some ones from the Sephora collection. I love all of these. These are their colorful metal effects. I have the one in To The Moon and Back, which is like a silvery shade. These are so fantastic. Let me just swatch one for you guys here. It's like really creamy, chromey, well, metal-y, I guess. And this one is in Oh Baby. These retail for like $10. You can remove these from this little component because the bottom part like opens up. Well, I'm gonna break it if I end up doing it. This one is gorgeous in first light for me personally because I love a yellow. So I'm gonna hold on to all of these. I feel like the Moira Lucent cream shadows are very comparable to the Sephora collection ones. And these are less expensive by a little bit. So, I mean, a recommendation is like, check these out if you're into really metal-like cream shadows. 
Speaking of metal light cream shadows, these ones from M Cosmetics are gorgeous. They're on the thicker, more textured side though, more so than Sephora and Moira. These are the Cosmic Pearl Dewy Eyeshadows. This one is in Luna. I loved this shade so much that I ended up going back for the other one, but they're a little bit more textured on the lid. You can definitely see it when it gets to the eyes. This one is in Moonrise. I think I like this one less than Luna because it just doesn't have as much light reflection. But both of these are gorgeous and I'm gonna hold on to them. Oh my gosh, I feel like we have so much to go here. Um, I have one from Lawless, this is broken. It is one of her limited edition singles in All A Dream. She still has this available on her website, but I did get it at Sephora. You can't get it there anymore. It's pretty. And at one point I wasn't reaching for really solid pigmented shadows the way I am now. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. Also from Lawless is the Bio Glitter Eyeshadow in Sparkling Rose. This is gorgeous, was also like a limited edition. It's totally gone and you cannot get your hands on it anymore, but that is fabulous. It is so fabulous. I absolutely love this. I'm definitely holding on to that. Still feels good too. I have two loose, I think these are glitters, loose shadows, loose pigment, loose shadow, one in Lavender Dust and one in Very Perry from the Pastel Roses. I got this when I purchased one of their palettes. I just don't reach for these very often, but I did grab for them. Again, when my son was asking me to do some little face painting and I pulled one of these out. I wanna say it was this one because this one looks like there's less in it. So I think I'm gonna hold on to this one and then let this one in Very Perry go. I have this one from Ulta. It's the Bouncy Eyeshadow mm, in Buttercream. You know, this is kind of a weird formula. It's more sheer. It's kind of just like a wet effect. I just, I'm, I think I'm gonna, I don't know. Am I gonna hold on to this? I do like this because I think it's similar to this one from Ofra, which is just a topper. It's one of their sparkling toppers in Glisten. And I like using these when I am just doing a liner, like a colorful liner, and I just want something shimmery on the eyes, I'll do like a turquoise or a pink or something, and then throw down these toppers, and I think it looks beautiful. So I might find some more love for this one, so I'm gonna hold on to this one. But also, speaking of the Ofra, I'm gonna hold on to that one as well. These two from Chantecaille are their Luminescent Eyeshades. Rose Gold is the, oh my gosh, Zebra and it's really pretty, but like expensive. And again, maybe not something I'm reaching for right now. And then the cheetah is in warm champagne. I wanna say I had the cheetah first and then went back for the zebra. These are like, I don't know, $55. They're like really expensive and they're okay. I just, I don't reach for these over my other ones. But again, it's like the cost for me that I just, I think I'm gonna hold on to them and like try and get money's worth out of them until they dry out on me. I have two duos from Hard Candy. These are their Kaleidoscope Baked Eyeshadow Duos. Pickup Line is blue and then Rock and Roll is purple. I actually think these are really good quality. They're just not something that I'm reaching for. And you know what, I almost never reach for blues. I thought this purple one was nice, but I'm gonna declutter both of these. These you also can't get anymore. They're the Jacqueline Top Coats. These are amazing. I wish I had known about these like before they were no longer available. This is in Glisten. I have been wearing the heck out of these recently. That is just beautiful, all on its own on the eyes. You guys, I've been trying to like hunt these down because they're so good. And Jacqueline doesn't get, you know, a penny of my money because uh, they're already no longer sold. So you have to buy them after the fact. This one is in Frozen. I am very tempted to pick up other shades. They are so gorgeous because they have like gold infused in the color. I am thoroughly enjoying these. I am definitely not letting these go. The last two from this stack are from Colfi. I actually have two more, hold on. These two I just bought, uh, as you can tell, I'm a fan of the formula. I have this one in Bronze Brocade and then this one in Satara Sparkles. They're so beautiful. Anytime you do for me like a creamy sparkly shadow, I'm all about it. Then I got Auburn Aura. Haven't obviously pulled these out of the box and tested these yet. I think they only come with five shades total. And then Disco Dreams. 
So the only one I don't have now is the yellow one. Such a fan of this formula. It's just so beautiful. Let me swatch Sitara Sparkles for you guys. It's a creamy, moussey texture, but I absolutely love the way these look on the eyes. They perform really, really well. I am such a fan of these from Colfi. So they're all relatively new. Like I haven't even had these two super long, but I love the formula so much. I went back and just got the other ones and I think they came in like the mail two or three days ago. So I haven't even had a chance to use them. And they're called the Zari Eyes Eyeshadow. This one in Disco Dreams is a duochrome. It's so pretty. I'm gonna have so much fun playing with it. So I kept 20, well, 23, I guess, with these from this stack and I ended up getting rid of, not a lot, seven. My little pile is growing though, I will say. This is the last of the little bins, then I have two bigger bins and then I have some of my single shadows in the palettes. So let's go over this guy. All right, so to start off, I have some liquid shadows from BCBG. These are amazing, but they don't make these anymore. And these smell, these are definitely expired. They're really opaque, really intense, shimmery liquid shadow that like performs really well in the eyes, but they all stink like straight up alcohol. They're so beautiful. I wish they made these and I could get like a re-up on these. But yeah, they're expired, so I'm gonna declutter those. Then these ones from Moira, I really enjoy. I haven't gotten a ton of use out of these. These are their Space Chameleon Multichromes, and I got the whole set, so I have all of them. I'm wondering if there's more somewhere else. I think this is it. I think there was, hmm, I, oh, here it is. I thought there was eight total. So I have all of them. Really enjoy this formula. It's a drier formula. The multi-chrome really translates on the eyes. Let me swatch this one for you. This one is like, I think the mermaid one. Really nice base pigment. The formula is really easy to work with because it is on the drier side. This is Artemis. My favorite mermaid one. Where is it? Is it this one? Yeah, Jewel of the Sea. This one is so beautiful. Like it shifts like purple to green to blue. Ooh. It's so, so pretty. So yeah, they're definitely an easy formula to work with. They're really my only or favorite like duochrome ones that I feel like I'm gonna hold on to. I do have the one from ColourPop and then Juvia's Place I'm letting go. So I'm keeping all of these ones. And speaking of the one from ColourPop, this is their Chrome Liquid Eyeshadow. This one is in Supernova. It's fine. It's an okay formula. It's on the drier side. It's pretty, but it's so terrible for hooded eyes. Like once it touches itself, it lifts and it dries like that. It's just, these ones from Moira are so much better. They're not as intense, like in terms of base pigment, but I don't find this a very hooded eye friendly formula. So I am going to, I think, hold on to this for reference for a little while, but it's going to be technically decluttered. Then I have one from Mob Beauty. This is the Sparkle Balm. It could be used, I suppose, as like a highlighter, but it's basically like a suspended sparkle shadow. It's a little bit on the drier side, but it's really pretty, again, with just kind of like this and a liner. I'm gonna hold on to that one. Then I have a duo from Rose Ink. This is called basically the eyeshadow duo in Satin Copper and Copper Shimmer. This one is the cream side and it tends to dry out a little quickly, but it still performs really well. Like, yeah, a lot of rose ink stuff tends to, look at this, hello. It's like, you gotta warm it up. It really dries out fast, like all of her products do. I don't even know if this is usable anymore. Like her bronzer, it just dried out on me so quickly. Mm. I've barely even had this, like, four months, maybe. See what it's doing? I just talked about this as really liking this product. It wasn't a Lore Best of Beauty winner, but honestly, like I have talked about her products drying out on my channel like several times. I just find that a lot of her stuff, besides the blush, which is kind of on the goopy side, I like goopy, but I feel like there could be people out there that might not like how thick her blush is, but everything else that I've tried that's cream from her line 
it does this. It just dries out on me. Sometimes I can warm it back up, but this was really tough. And I just never like the way that it looks. Again, I haven't even had that this long. This, that long, just said that backwards. But I think I'm just gonna let this go because I'm not gonna reach for it. I don't wanna have to, I don't wanna have to make it work for me. I want it to work for me, you know? Then I have two of the Danessa Myricks Color Fix, one in Nude 2, Nude 3, and then Latte. I almost never reach for these, but it's nice if you're looking for like a nice liquid shadow that you couldn't get off in a hurricane. I think these are really pretty though. They have a purpose. I'm gonna hold on to both of these because they're still good. And the nude one is like I bought in 2023. This one is a full on highlighter from Moira Beauty, but I use it as a single shadow because I bought the whole set and this is just too deep for me, but I love it on the eyes. So I'm gonna hold on to that guy. Then I have Space Cowboy from Urban Decay. Good single wet shadow. I don't know though if I'm like over the moon. No, no, it's it's pretty. I just, I don't, I don't know. I find like I like other ones better than that, even though that one's like super popular. I have a duo from Wander Beauty. I absolutely love this. It's the double date eyeshadow duo. The powder is in Smitten and the cream is in Swoon. See, this is one that I would rather reach for over the rose ink. It's just better quality. It doesn't dry out. The shimmer is nice and has light reflection. It is intense. Yeah, I'm gonna hold on to that one. And now I don't feel bad about letting the one from Rose Ink go. Oh, I feel like we have a ways to go here. I have one here from e.l.f. I also have their glitter somewhere. This is just one of their liquid shadows in. Oh man, their writing is so small. Moon. This is actually a really good formula. I really enjoy this. Not a ton of product, but I feel like it is beautiful. And it performs well and hooded eye friendly. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. Then I have two of the Prismetal Chrome, Chrome Eye Mousses from JCAT. These are not good. They might be like good. You know, when I stick my wet finger in, they perform so much better than when I have a dry hand. But yeah, these are like really difficult to rub into the eyes. They're kind of patchy. If your finger isn't wet, they're on the dry side. This one is just like all glitter. I just don't enjoy these. I've seen people swatch them and they look so much better than when I swatch it. I don't think they perform as well as a lot of my other ones. But yeah, I got a lot more intensity when I went in with a wet finger than like when I try it dry. I mean, I don't think you need to do that. You shouldn't have to. I'm just, I'm not gonna reach for these, so I'm gonna declutter them. I have one here from ColourPop in Fine Pearl. Why do I have this all by itself? I do not know. I mean, pretty, I don't know. I feel like I need to pull out my other ColourPop ones right now and see which ones I'm gonna hold on to. Actually, I think that's it. The only other one I had was Birthday Wish and I ended up decluttering it. This one in Fine Pearl, it's fine. <laughs> then I Heart This. I wanna say this is like a pretty taupey shade. As you can kind of see, I'm just not like over the moon about the ColourPop Super Shock formula. Having tested so many others, I like I Heart This. Fine Pearl was fine. And then Ladybird, I feel like I really do like this really wet effect. Yeah, that one's pretty darn icy and intense. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. And then this last one in Ritz, I feel like is also very wet, taupey shade. I really like that one. I'm gonna let Fine Pearl go. It's just boring me. It's boring me, that's what it is, bye. So from here, I ended up holding on to Seventeen, and I am decluttering. Twelve. I feel like the Kaja might have come from another stack. I don't. I don't even remember. But we're going with twelve, I guess. So these ones are going bye bye. This next little bin here are all ones that I've tested, but I haven't talked about on my channel. I like to incorporate all of the like singles and duos and even trios that I test on my channel in speed reviews. And so these ones have not gone into speed reviews yet.
Therefore, I don't want to get rid of any of these. But let me talk about these ones first. These were the multi-dimensional eye toppers from Patrick Ta that were like for sale for like one day and then they disappeared. It's like they had terrible reviews and Patrick like pulled them. That's kind of what it feels like. But I don't know why. Like what is wrong with an eye topper, right? Like an eye topper is an eye topper. I mean, they're really pretty if you like work with them in a like eye topper kind of way. I really enjoy these. I honestly was using these again with a colorful liner and just this on my eyes. It looked really gorgeous. As long as you understand it's an eye topper and you're not trying to get more out of it and it is a loose pigment. So I think they're great. So, I mean, again, I'm holding on to all of this stuff so I won't bore you with repeating. I'm keeping that one over and over. A couple here from Stila. I have the Glitter and Glow and actually two of the Glitter and Glows. And I wanna say, oh, that's an e.l.f. one. Sorry, here's the other Stila one, Glisten and Glow. These are beautiful. I think I prefer the Glisten and Glow. No, I prefer the Glitter and Glow. I thought I would prefer the Glisten and Glow. This one is in Kitten Kaleidoscope, but I don't. I prefer the Glitter. This one is in Kitten Karma. I just, I think that this is gorgeous. And it, it has something to do too with the shade. Anytime you throw a gold, sparkle inside of a pigment, I get all goo goo gaga. So that's why I like that one. This one is in Diamond Dust. It's again, just something about like the extra sparkle. It just has extra dimension. So I'm really partial to the Glitter and Glow formula over the Glisten and Glow. Then this one from e.l.f., actually pretty decent. Can't tell you what shade, but this is one of their liquid glitter eyeshadow toppers. I also think it's really pretty. It doesn't have gold sparkles, but it has like bright silver sparkles inside of kind of like a silvery base. So I also think e.l.f. did a really good job. Not as refined. If you can see like these sparkles are thick as compared to what Stila does, but it's still pretty. So had fun with those. Um, one from Half Magic I just wore the other day. This is an ASMR. This is her Chrome Addiction. I have to say like, the e.l.f. one is pretty darn good. The Stila ones are pretty darn good. The benefit to this is that I feel like it's a little bit of a, a creamier formula. Like it doesn't feel as dry as the Stila ones and the glitters are more refined than e.l.f. But I don't know. I almost prefer the other two over this one from Half Magic, but it's not bad. It's like a multi colored dimensional sparkle kind of in this base. I don't know, this kind of brownish taupey base. It's pretty. Then this one from Stila, so underwhelming. So, so underwhelming. What were they even thinking here? This is basically just your standard powder. Like this could be a straight up highlighter. Like what is this for $20? Why did they even make this? Because they don't specialize in single shadows. I mean, I'm just not, I'm, I'm not gonna end up using this. It's gotta stay for now because I haven't even done my review on it yet. Not that anyone is asking, but something like this, I would have like not charged more than $7.99 for. And even that, it's ridiculous because Essence one, Essence makes one that's like super comparable and it's like three bucks. So I don't know what Stila was thinking. That's just weird to me. Then I have one from L'Oreal. I can never remember what the shade is because they cover it with these darn stickers, but it's just one of their singles. I, you know what? I don't even know if I want to keep this. It kind of reminds me of the Stila in a way. It's nice. I just, again, I don't think I'm going to reach for something this champagne-y. I used to love very light singles. And that's why I used to have a ton of them. But then I started th realizing I actually really like singles as one and done. And so I'm just not reaching for the lighter colors anymore. I prefer something that has more pigment that I can put all over the lid. You know what, for now I'm gonna hold on to this one. I'm, well, I was gonna hold on to it anyway, but I was like thinking there for a second that I would actually declutter it. And I forgot the purpose of this. Okay, good job, Care. This one from MAC was a limited edition one, sparkler eyeshadow in zero chill. Again, what, what is MAC thinking? Like MAC has so many good single formulas. Why make this? What is the point of that? Really, 
let's move on. Kiko Milano High Pigment Eyeshadow in 30. That That's all I get. Just a mauve -y matte shade. Then I have the Sephora Colorful Shadow Stick and Liners. Fawn Shimmer, Iris Shimmer. Really, really love this formula. I don't really want to use these as liners, even though they do come with a sharpener and they're pointed like, you know, so the purpose of using it. This one did come out, but I can get over it. I think these are super blendable, really, really nice. Also, I feel like ColourPop does a, a comparable formula. These aren't like terribly expensive. Sephora usually is pretty affordable, but still, I mean, I would rather buy the ColourPop ones, honestly. And then I had this liner in here. It's the Intense Color Long Lasting Eyeliner from Kiko Milano. Lovely gel liner. It is the sharpenable kind though, and you do have to smudge it out, but haven't used it long enough to wanna get rid of it. These I am freaking loving from ColourPop. They're liquid, BFF liquid liners. Oh my gosh, you guys. This one is in pink. What is this shade? Ducky. I have been wearing the heck out of these. These are so opaque. You get such a fine tip. They last all day. They're so precise. These are high quality liners. I love them, been wearing them all the time. Want a ton more shades in these. It has begun to rain pretty hard outside. So if you guys can hear that in the background, it's, it's coming down out there. So this last basket here is all the stuff that I've either only worn once or haven't worn it all yet. So I'm not getting rid of any of this stuff, but I figured we could go over it just for the sake of going over it. So here's some of the stuff that was in there. Most of these I've used at least once, just a handful I haven't. Um, I have two of the Pat McGrath Chroma Lux shadows that just re-released. I have them in shades Midnight Temptress and Copper Siren. These are gorgeous. They have a weird alcohol smell to them. I mean, they're just kind of smelly. They're stinky, like a sour smell, but they're beautiful on the eyes. I have done like a dedicated video with these, but I haven't used them since then. I think these are honestly very, very gorgeous, quite expensive. They do have a sticker on the top, not my absolute favorite, but the formula is delightful. Oh, I wish I could have gotten a better swatch there. It's just really pretty. I'm really into these, like I said, you guys, the colorful, more intense single shadows right now. So I love both of these. I have one of the glitter pucks from Half Magic. This is just in the shade Dopamine Sparkle. It only comes in one shade, I'm pretty sure. This, I haven't put on the eyes yet, but I've swatched it. As you can see, it's kind of like more of a wet formula. This isn't just for the eyes. This is for like face and body too. I don't know if I'm going to love this. I thought I would, but I think it's maybe a little bit too creamy for me. See how much of an indent I've made just kind of like swatching this product. But of course, still want to try it on the eyes. Had wanted this while it was sold out. And then at the minute it came back in stock, I bought it. I like the gold sparkles with the really light pinky base pigment. I just don't know if it's enough base pigment for me. Another one from Half Magic is one of their singles. It's the Carrot Queen with K's. This is just a basic shimmer, single shimmer formula. It's fine. I just think that it may be a little bit overpriced for what it is. It's okay. I haven't worn this on the eyes more than once, I think in a video, and it was all right. It was okay. Um, it reminds me of the Essence Soft Touch Eyeshadow. This is the one I was talking about that was very similar to the Stila. It's basically just a champagne single soft shimmer, but Stila did it for 20 bucks and this one is like $3.99. So not much to it. This is probably not something I'll hold on to later on, but I'm gonna hold on to it right now because again, I've just worn it that one time. Then I have one from L'Oreal that I think I like more than the other one from L'Oreal. This one is the Color Riches in Peng uh, Chocolat. I just think I like this color a little bit more as a, a single. It just does more for me than the other just very pale champagne color. This one is almost like a pink tinge to it. 
Then I just picked this one up from Macy's at one of their sales from Shiseido. This is the Pop Powder Gel Eyeshadow in Zuku Zuku Brown. Also really pretty formula, but haven't even gotten this to the eyes yet. Just the feeling of it is so silky soft. Really nice light reflection. Again, it's that like gold kind of infused in the color. Just really enjoying that kind of like effect on the eyes lately. And then I have one from MAC. This is one of their Dazzle Shadows in Discotech. I like this one so much better than the other MAC I was showing you guys. Again, this is just kind of your more amplified single shimmer. Nothing super frilly, but it's good quality. This is what I would like on the eyes as opposed to that other one from MAC. Then I have one here that came in, I don't know, a set because I bought something at Macy's from MAC. I think it was like their mini lipstick set. So I got this for free. This is the Amber Lights Frost. It doesn't say like Dazzle Shadow Extreme or anything, but I feel like it's also a shimmery formula. Pretty sure. This one doesn't feel as, yeah, it's not quite as like light reflecting as the other one, but it's still nice. Also a decent color. I have two here from RMS. They're their eye lights. I have Halo. I've worn these once. They are freaking beautiful. I absolutely love these. Mine so far haven't come like screaming out at me, but I have heard that happens. Mine are very slightly pressurized, but not intense. So, so far I'm happy about that. Hopefully I got enough on here to show you guys like swatches. These are gorgeous cream shadows. Probably, I don't know, some of my favorite right now because they're just really, really thin and they're an eloquent formula. They're just very sophisticated and elevated. They dry down nicely, they wear nicely. So far, big fan. I don't love the component, but that is what it is. I have one here that is a liquid shadow. It's the Chandelier Shimmer Shadow from Winky Lux in the shade Bottle Pop. I really enjoy this formula. I've never heard anyone talk about this, but they do sell this at Ulta, like online. It reminds me of the L'Oreal, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the name of the one from L'Oreal, the Liquid Shadow. This is just a thinner formula. It also wears better. It doesn't get like as like textured and crunchy on the lid. This one is just much softer. I really enjoy this, again, feel like if you're into a single liquid shimmer shadow, this is amazing. Winky Lux tends to be a little bit more on the pricey side as it pertains to like Ulta and what you'd think for a drugstore, but I still think it's a formula worth checking out. I have one of the Ash and Soots, Ash and Embers Eye Soots in Fauna from Ritual Defeat. The packaging is the updated version, but I still have a hard time getting my finger in here because I have big fingers. I think it's really pretty. Again, not sure I think it's as intense enough for me as I like, but again, I don't even know if I've used that more than once. I bought this one also at Macy's, it was like half off, and I wanted to get a lighter color story for a while because the other Kaja one that I decluttered, it was just too dark. This is the Beauty Bento Bouncy Mosaic Chrome Shimmer and Matte Trio. So this one, I wanna say has a little bit of a different finish in like the shimmer formula, this is in the color story Color Sunrise. I want to say this one, yeah, is like a very textured shimmer shade. I think I've swatched this, but that's it. And it's like a duochrome too. Isn't that pretty? So I think I'm going to enjoy, oh yeah, look at this beautiful fiery shimmer. I think I'm going to enjoy this color story and this formula more than the other one because this is fabulous. This is actually a matte with like gold sparkles. Not sure that'll, tr oh, oh my gosh, that's intense. That's one of those mats where the gold sparkles actually shows up. Usually they just kind of diffuse into nothing. But I think I'm gonna enjoy this a lot more than the other one, which was just a little deep, I think. Like I'm not really into a super deep purple matte. So that's kind of why I didn't enjoy that. Not that I didn't enjoy the formula. And then I have two of the Luxaza eyeshadow sticks. These were sent to me in PR. I actually really love Luxaza. I told you guys how much I loved their other stick shadows, the ones with the brushes on them. These were reformulated. So it says the new formula eyeshadow stick. I have little stickers on here from them. Oh, these do come with like 
smudgers, not like brushes, like the synthetic haired brush. These have little smudgers on the end. I haven't even swatched these yet or opened them. Oh, it totally broke off. It's like up here. Man, all of these eyeshadow sticks do that to me. Do you guys have like trouble with all your eyeshadow sticks? I told you guys the Milani one does that. I'm not all of them, but a lot of them do fall out. S005. It's like a shimmery kind of steel blue color. Hmm, I don't know. I don't really love blue. I don't think I got to pick the shades. I think they just sent it to me. M006. This looks like straight black. Yeah, this is like a creamy black. Hmm, I don't know if I'm gonna love these it's just in terms of the color. But anyway, I am gonna give those a shot. And then I bought a little set. These I've been wanting to try. The shadow sticks from Bobbi Brown. It's the mini longwear cream shadow stick, City Stroll. So I guess it's golden pink and dusty mauve and a little mini mascara. So I'm gonna try all of these. I really think that Laura Mercier and Bobbi Brown probably are like my most mm, desired shadow stick formula. I think ColourPop is really good. I just, I feel like at least the Laura Mercier one is really just a superior formula for longevity and creaminess and the packaging. Like I have none of those shadow sticks have broken on me. So I am dying to give the Bobbi Brown ones a shot. And then I have this one from CoverGirl. I picked up, I don't know, pretty recently, I think. It says limited edition. The Exhibitionist Kelsey Ballerina Liquid Glitter Eyeshadow. I fully intend to use this. I'm just gonna open this up. This looks delightful. So let's see what this looks like. Oh. Wow, that's really thin, feels really good going on. It almost has like silver or blue sparkles, like suspended within the pigment. Ooh, that looks like it'd be really pretty on the eyes. This might be a little bit too emollient. Like that was very, very liquidy. It doesn't have any like texture to it the way the Winky Lux one does and a lot of them do. This one is really, really thin. Hmm. That might be a good or bad thing. I don't know, but excited to give that one a shot. Okay, and then I went and I bought seven different Moira Beauty. These are called the Star Show Shadow Pots, and I haven't even put these to my eyes yet. I've been testing so many other formulas because I grew my single shadow collection so much this year that I honestly have not even had time to get to these. I'll swatch a couple for you guys. You can see how great they are. This is Checkmate, or at least how well they swatch. This one is a vibe. Looks like a pretty gold shade. This one is in Showtime. I don't know, is that like kind of a coppery shade? This is more champagne in literally then this kind of icy white silver one is in quartz and ooh, this one looks really, really good. This is Muse and then this kind of purpley shade is in Eureka. Let's swatch, let's swatch these three right here. Those look fun to swatch. So this one is in a vibe which is like a pure kind of goldy shade. This is what they look like. Pretty thick and textured. I've compared these to the Pat McGrath ones that just released, because I feel like they're a very, very similar formula. Look how amazing that looks. Depending upon how I feel about these, I could see myself getting more of these. This one is Muse. It's a brown shade, really pretty, like single. Look at that. It's so creamy and delightful. I could see this being like a little bit textured on the eyes. I don't mind that at all. I have not swatched all of these yet either. So I feel like this is my first time swatching both of these shades, but I have swatched this one in Eureka. This one I definitely swatched comparing to Pat McGrath. I mean, they're a little bit chunky and flaky, but oh my goodness gracious. Moira Beauty just does such an amazing freaking job on their stuff. Okay, this very last stack is all of my singles in the palettes and I am going to declutter some of these because I barely reach for them. 
and there's definitely some in here that I prefer in terms of formula more than the others. So I have some singles from Davina. I really like this formula right here, which is a more metallic chrome finish, but then these ones are just on the lighter side. So I wanna swatch them because I don't think I'm gonna hold on to all of them. Like this blue one is fun, but I don't know if I love that. It's just not like um, an overly impactful formula compared to the other ones. Yeah, and this is just maybe a little bit too shifty, not enough base for me. So I'm gonna let this one go in Bubble Fizz. This one I might hold on to, I don't know yet. This one is in Amara. I really like shimmers that are orangey and pink, that they shift like that. By the way, this blue one was in Smarties. Then this yellow one is a little bit different in Butter Pucker. It's like a cross between this formula and this other one here. This one is chunkier. Hmm. It's like glittery too. It's not like a fully soft shade like some of the other ones. It kind of feels like this one, but even more glittery and chunky. A lot more fallout on that one too. These two I'm definitely gonna hold on to. I'll swatch these for you guys. These are like the really foiled intense shades that I just really enjoy for singles. So definitely holding on to those. This one here is in Fire Hunt. Yes, Fire Hunt. And then this one is in Moonbeam. As nice as this light blue one is, realistically, I'm not gonna reach for it. This one either, it, again, just not enough base for me. So I'm gonna let Smarties go and I'm gonna let Bubble Fizz go. For now, I'm gonna hold on to these other two. They're just my kind of colors. I really enjoy yellows and oranges as singles very, very much. I am going to declutter those ones. I have a palette here from With Love Cosmetics. I actually moved some Ofra stuff in here. If you watch my face palette declutter, I did take out some singles from the It's a Draft palette from Samantha March and Ofra because I really enjoyed the formula of the blush, bronzer, and highlighter, but I didn't like the shadows necessarily and I was never reaching for the palette, so I ended up getting rid of it. But I do have some With Love Cosmetics glitters here, but I am going to declutter this one here. It's just not, um, I'm, I'm just not into like multi-dimensional kind of bluish, greenish, pinkish, glitters i don't know i would prefer my glitter to be like a solid shade like this i don't know why i'm not sure what color this is it's not at the bottom but i'm going to declutter that one i am also going to i think declutter this one as well glitters are fun and fine but you know it's not my favorite and this one i might hold on to in whatever shade this is let me swatch it I think these are drying out anyway. Yeah, I'll hold on to this one, but I'm gonna declutter the other two. Well, thank goodness we're at the end there because that glitter just destroyed my hand. So I also have some Odin's Eye and Cleona shadows. These are amazing. These are her, my goodness, they're called the Series 2 Iridescent Multichromes. These, this one is like eyes, lips, cheeks. This one here is just for eyes. It's the Glitter Multichrome in Opulent, that purple one, totally off camera. The purple one is in Opulent, and then this one is in Lux. These are amazing. I would love to get more of these from Cleona. And then these are all my Odin's Eye ones. I mean, for now, I wanna hold on to the Odin's Eye ones. I don't think they're bad. I just, I don't get enough use out of them. But what I am gonna do is take, now that I can see what I've got going here, hmm. Can you stop? These magnets are messing up. I'm gonna throw this one in here because it won't fit in the other little single. So I'm gonna leave that there because I would prefer to put this in my like face palette drawer so that it's like just by itself. So I'm gonna hold on to these and move this to the face palettes. Then this one here is from Unique Beauty. A brand that I really enjoy. Right now it looks like their site is down, but I have raved about their shadows. This is actually a highlighter in Grimoire. It's just not a highlighter shade, so I kept it as eyeshadow, but I don't know if I would reach for this. Like, it is really intense, it's really pretty. If I wanted a green look, like, this would be amazing. I just have other ones. I just, I never think to reach for this, and I almost never 
like build a green look with like this kind of really intense neon green shade in mind. So I'm gonna end up decluttering that, holding onto these ones, this one, and from here we're getting rid of these five. I don't have an extra palette to put them into, so I'm probably gonna have to like buy an additional palette to put these into to pass them along. Maybe my sister wants them or something. Not a super brutal declutter. I have just a little basket of stuff that I'm getting rid of to my right. But let me show you guys what the drawer looks like now. Let me show you what we ended up decluttering and that will be it. The rain is really starting to pick up now. So if you guys can hear it in the background, it's coming down. So this is my Alex 9. Yeah, Alex 9. This is where I keep all of my singles in this drawer. This so far is everything that I've chosen to keep and that I have already tested and is gonna go back. So I put all my sticks here, I don't know, liquids here and potteds between these two. And I still have some room for some more in the back because here is all the stuff that I have tested, hasn't gone into a speed reviews yet. Don't mind the foundations. And then these are the items that I have not even used more than once. I'm basically not done testing. Like that's how much I've consumed in the last like couple of months. And then here are all of my liners that go into a different drawer. So between this drawer, I have to like, you know, combine the stuff in here eventually once I'm kind of done testing it. I think I can do it. But anyway, that is everything that I have kept. Let me show you what we decluttered. And here is everything that I have decluttered. It is 37 different items, including the five singles. It's not a ton of products, but it feels like it takes up a lot of space. I feel like this amount of products would definitely take up a huge chunk in my drawer, so I feel good about it. Again, I, I told you guys this was not going to be an intense or brutal declutter, but I still feel good about it. I still needed to do this and get rid of some that were expired that I wouldn't use, move on, etc. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm out of here, and I hope to catch you all in the next one. Bye, guys.